Now it's time to talk to you about black holes. So in order to understand them, or at least to talk more about them, it helps to first review what we mean by escape velocity. I don't know if you remember that from the uh, main course from paper one and two material. But uh, just to remind you, the way we get an escape velocity, that's why I said remember, that's when the total energy equals zero. Do you remember the equation for total energy? Maybe I'll put it down here. We'll do it. So total energy is, let's see, total energy is just the kinetic plus the potential energy. Um, so if you're in orbit or in space, this really still is true. And if you're going to fully escape, you have to have the total energy be zero. So therefore we set zero equal to EK plus EP and away we go. We just have to remember what the equations are for these. So for EK, the kinetic energy, it's easy. It's just one half MV squared. Do you remember what it is for potential energy? It's minus G capital M lowercase m over R. So what we can do now is just do a little bit of manipulation. We move the minus GMM over R to the left, so that way we get minus GMM over R equals half MV squared. I'm doing it a bit fast because it's just review from the core here. Uh, so we have M's here cancel out. That's not from the core, from the AHL, but still. Uh, we have the M's canceling out, so now uh, let's just look at the V here. So can you see the, in order to get V by itself, I could put the two up top, so now I can say V squared equals two G M over R. And therefore, I could say that my, what we call the escape speed is just uh, two G M over R, but square rooted. So this right here is what it would be here. So this right here is the escape velocity. Now, why is that important? If we want to consider a black hole now, here's what we can do. We can consider what happens when you actually make a black hole? Now, this is coming from the um, the astrophysics option, which obviously you didn't have to do because you're taking the relativity option. But in there, we talk about things called like the Chandra-Sekhar limit and the Oppenheimer-Volkov limits. And basically, those are uh, related to what's called electron degeneracy pressure and neutron degeneracy pressure. Those are key words to, to look up. But basically, what happens is the end result, the end of its life cycle of a very massive star, it's going to have so much gravity pushing inwards is going to be enough to sort of crush these limits, these ways of resisting uh, gravity. It's basically going to crush them down and essentially sort of break space. It's going to be where you're going to make what we call a singularity. This is what we call a black hole. So inside the black hole, and what, we're, what I mean by inside is going to be within this thing we're going to call the Schwarzschild radius. So the Schwarzschild radius is going to be defined here. And what we call the event horizon, some people call it that. So this is the word we use for it. Now, what is this all really? We can actually do the mathematics of it. So see, in the astrophysics option, we just talk about um, black holes in general. But see, here in relativity, we can go in more detail. We can actually quantify things with mathematics here, which I think is awesome. So in a black hole, what we do is we set the escape velocity to be equal to c, the speed of light. And do you remember what we had here? We had that the escape velocity is square root of 2 gm over r. So I'll write that down again. So v escape, just to remind us, is 2 g capital M over r, where r is the radius, m is the mass, g is this constant, this gravitational constant. So what we can say then for a black hole, the escape velocity is equal to c. So what we do is we set c right here equal to 2 g m over r, square rooted of course, uh, what we're going to do is, when we're talking about the Schwarzschild radius, we're going to put a little lowercase s for it, for Schwarzschild. So what we'll do then is, well, we have to square both sides to get rid of that square root. So now we have c squared equals 2gm over rs. If I want to get rs by itself, I take that, I put it up to the top. So rs equals 2gm over c squared. And this is this. This is the Schwarzschild radius. So what it means is this is the radius from which uh, the escape velocity is the speed of light, which means anything within that radius, in order to escape, you'd have to go faster than the speed of light, which nothing can do. So what this really defines, and this is the, what we call the event horizon. It means that anything that, you know, anything that goes in it is not coming out. You couldn't even send a signal for help. Let's say you, you know, accidentally flew into one of these things these objects, this singularity, we call it. So it, let's say you flew within this Schwarzschild radius, within this event horizon. If you flew within it, 
you know, uh, so less than that distance, then you, could, you couldn't even send out a signal for help because your signal, which is light, would go out and it would actually come back in on itself. So this is why it's like the point of no returns. That's why I like this little joke right here. What happens in the black hole stays in the black hole. Yeah, literally. Now, of course, uh, black holes uh, do some weird things. They can actually accrete and sort of attract matter. And it turns out, um, I mean, they act like regular gravitational objects. So things could be in orbit around them. As long as they don't go inside, then they're fine. In fact, at the center of our own galaxy, there's what we call a supermassive black hole. In fact, the example I'm going to give you is going to involve that one. Uh, but we know it's there because we can watch a whole bunch of stars actually in happy gravitational orbits around it. And then we can actually look at the orbits of those stars to determine the mass of that thing in the middle. You'll see its mass is pretty crazy. So uh, black holes, they can even eat. They can be hungry, so to speak. We we'll call it an active galactic nucleus sometimes if it's the center of a galaxy. That's basically when they're eating material and through conservation of uh, momentum, stuff will actually come out the other end. So black holes are really interesting. <laughs> So we have something else called gravitational redshift as well. I like this black hole cat stealing your gravity. Uh, so we have something called gravitational redshift. So if you're close to a gravitational object or farther away, then you might have um, the frequency of light actually changing. That also happens as you get closer to a gravitational object, like a black hole, but also anything else. Delta H is going to be a difference in height, and this will be a difference in frequency. And that's a pretty straightforward equation. Now what I want to talk about then is the different time near a black hole. And we're going to go into more detail of this in another video.